So guys, in the previous video, we created this basic nav bar with, we also created this footer. We also themed a bit in our, this, our, this part. So now it's time to go ahead and scaffold hook our applications with the APIs. So in the source directory, I'm going to create a new folder called constants. And within constant, I'm going to create a new file called index.js. And in that, I'm going to export a constant from there, base URL. Okay, so this will be base URL equal to, we are going to HTTP localhost. And our API endpoint was on 4000 port running. So this is the constant that we have created. And in production, if you want to move to, you can directly just have to change this API or this constant and everywhere on the application, it will be updated. So I'm going to create a new folder in a source directory called services. And within that services, I'm going to create a new file called index.js or whatever the name you just feel like you can do it, but I prefer index.js. And then I'm going to import Axios from our Axios. So this has created an Axios instance and I'm going to create an API constant. So constant API equal to axios.create. So basically this is going to create our instance and this will take a base URL. So if you want to base URL, if you want to use the base URL, so which we have de import defined in our constants, we can get into the constants directory and since we have registered that inside the index.js file, that means it will automatically pull it up from there. So I look for base URL and that will be our the space URL. And since the key and the name has the same values, we can get rid of one. And then we're going to export default from here, this API. So now this API service is ready. Other properties, it also takes like headers. So for now, we'll put our headers and we'll simply say content type application slash JSON. So we will be dealing with JSON data, but that's fine for now. And this is our basic of our services, service API services ready to, in, to be injected here. So now we'll bring in our API service, import API from and now I'm going to, I'm not going to use the relative part instead that I'm going to use the alias for the source directory we can use it here services and it will automatically look for index.js file now we can see that we have a squiggly line and that's basically nothing just because we have defined this API service but never used so now we have our uploader file from here so I'm going to get that that file equal to basically from this ref whatever we have at the zeroth index we are extracting our file and then we are sending that file to our API service endpoint so let res equal to await and since it is gonna take some time on the service so this function will be asynchronous and we can define asynchronous function by putting async keyword on the top of the function and API dot post and this was going to images slash single upload and here we will create a form data so let form data equal to new form data so this is a form data instance and form data dot append will append our file with our this file that we have over here and then we'll pass that form data over there and as I save it let me quickly console log what do we get in the response let's simply say API upload response and we'll put res inside that so let's see what happens so as I do this if I click on this part click on that and we are getting this upload response from the server and if we check our networks tab we have that file has been uploaded with 200 that means the status is okay and we are also getting our image path from the backend so now it's time to 
and also this is giving me a lot of things but I'm interested in the data variable so I'm gonna instead of using this I'm gonna destructure this and I'm gonna pull out the data from that and now if I save it click here upload one more time now we are getting this upload image path so now it's time to put our uh, this upload file next to this part so the way we can do that is the uploader mass we have it over here I'm gonna cut this part from here till there and I'm gonna give it a class a div with a class of dflex actually class so basically flex and then that I'll put my this part and then again wrap one more time with the div so this will be one part and nothing changes over here and now I'm gonna create our image just outside of this div so within that div but outside of this div so I'm gonna give a IMG class with a IMG fluid and IMG thumbnail and also we'll get a little bit margin from the left hand side uploaded IMG and source will be coming basically from here so let me quickly create a data property this will return a object and within that object we will have a property so we'll simply say uploaded IMG will set it to initially now empty string and we'll render out this part only if we have something inside that so we can use conditionals so we if we have something inside that then only render this part and source will be our this and we'll bind the source with our uploaded image text for upload image so if that image is not there then we'll render this text otherwise that's fine and once we are done uploading with our file now we are getting this data property and within that data we have a IMG path image path and we'll set our this property to that whatever we are receiving from the backend and meanwhile I just wanted to put some styling so I'm gonna copy this part I'm gonna get into this uh, main.sas with the single upload put a height of 100 pixels that will be important and let's see how it looks and as I do this part we'll set our image to whatever we are getting from our data dot image path value so now if I go ahead and upload one we'll see our image is rendering next to that and also I want to quickly get rid of this console statement because we no longer need that but that's good practice in order to test your API's on those things and now you can see it is look working fine so with all that set we want to we also want to render our progress bar so for that I'm gonna go to bootstrap view documentation and look for a progress bar from here and if I click we'll get one progress bar from there so these are the basic progress bar I'm gonna use this standard animated progress bar that we have and that's here I'm gonna copy this part and since we have already we have to import this from there but so far we haven't set up our view bootstrap so what we can do inside our main.js in order to use view bootstrap components we have to import bootstrap actually from bootstrap view and as I do this we'll see our bootstrap view is ready to pull in and app dot actually I'll simply say view dot use 
and we'll pass it as a middleware kind of thing that we did in our express and as I do this now we bootstrap is ready to be used anywhere any point of time and let me quickly put this actually instead of this progress bar I'm gonna copy this part paste it and set it taking value so for now I'm gonna put it dynamically bind the value here so that how it looks in the UI maximum is 100 and since it is a self-closing tag also we can get rid of that and as I do this if I go to this part now we can see this here so what I'm gonna do is gonna cut this out from there and I'm gonna put it that into side that div and I'm also gonna give it a class of flex grow one and as I do this now we can see our progress bar is there but we need some kind of margin from the left and right so MX let's make it two for now and that looks quite nice so this is our animated progress bar and now what I'm gonna do is gonna create two piece of states inside our component single comp single uploader component so is uploading I'll set it to false and we have upload progress we'll set it to zero initially and now we're gonna bind these values with our this thing so this I only want to render if the file is being uploaded so I'm gonna copy this and render only with the conditional if is uploading it true and upload progress will be binded to the value that we have over here so we'll pass that value and now we cannot we no longer see this so it was the implementation is pretty straightforward with the progress bar so before sending this file I want to set this piece of state is uploading set it to true and once we are done uploading our files we're gonna set it to false back again okay and that sounds good now in order to catch the progress we have upload progress and this will give the event and let me console log on the event let's see what do we have so as I do this click here put that and we cannot see anything actually let me for the hinting let's save it on upload progress we can cache that event and put a console log statement over there and we we'll look for this E and as I save it now if I upload any file if I click now we are getting this kind of event from there so we are interested in the target uh, total so this is number total number of bytes that we have regarding with this image and this is the loaded how much that has been uploaded so you can see it was a single image that why it was sent in a one go so we can simply look for that and we can simply say this dot progress upload progress and that will be basically our and I'm gonna destructure this part so we are extracting total as well as a loaded and we also know that loaded upon total oops and if we multiply this thing with 100 we'll get our upload progress and if I make it to fixed by two so it will get only two decimal places so now as I do this this should work just fine for us if I click one we can see our image but this was an image which was sent in a one go but if I go ahead and test with a file also if I click one file now you can see that is moving there initially it was set to zero uh, one quick change once we are done uploading we want to set that back to 
zero again that upload progress. So let me quickly drag one, put one, one by one it is uploading and now you can see that our file is being uploaded on the server. And once we are done, now you can see that we are getting, but this since it is a video that's why we are not able to see that all other stuff. So let me quickly go to my server and delete that. Okay, so we have in our projects directory, we have our this upload a project and our server, that image or the file has been generated in the uploads directory and so far we have uploaded so many things. So now you can see that has been uploaded. I'm gonna quickly get rid of them. If I reload, we don't find that thing and it is just working fine for us. So that's basically it about our uploader component and in the next video, uh, now we are gonna work with our this thing, what do we have, what uh, multiple uploader. So I'm gonna create a new file called multi uploader dot view file and I'm gonna copy everything from here in this file and I'm gonna name it to multi so this will be a multi uploader component and in main that says I'm gonna copy this and put it multi so this scaffolding will be applicable on the styles in a multi as well as a single and now instead of this we are not interested in everything instead of that we are uploading all the files so we have the files or what we can do we can destructure that and now we have to do play a little bit of that because since our server was receiving a area of a file so what I'm gonna do is gonna quickly install a package called Lodash. So I'm gonna say npm install Lodash. And this might take a moment. And before that, I'm gonna import that from our Lodash library. This is a nice package for to deal with the JavaScript based objects and a lot of other stuff, even the arrays. And I'm gonna quickly comment that line. And here I'm gonna say, underscore for each and I will look through these files so we'll get one by one all the file and we will we will append our file and our files key dot so once we are done with that it was to our this end point and rest of the part remains same only one quick thing is that I don't want to make it here instead of that I want to render out completely outside of this div that we have over here so I'm gonna say D flex again I'm gonna use flex boxes put that inside and now this will be an array of the image that we have uploaded IMGs and this will send images from there as an array inside the data property so I can get rid of that images over here or what I what else I can do I can do some kind of array thing so we are spread spreading that whatever we had gonna copy that this dot this IMGs and that should work for now but still we we might get the error so what I'm going to do to give it a class of MR2 and we we'll loop through our images so v dash for will loop uploaded IMG in uploaded IMGs and for the key since it uses virtual DOM, that's why we need to provide our key. We'll bind that key to this value. And as I save it, and we no longer need this VIF statement. 
So now if I go ahead and gonna render out inside our app.view component, so we need to bring it from there, first of all, instead of the single, it will be multi, and gonna paste that multi, upload a component just before this part, and gonna render out just after that, I will provide a label, single file for this one and for this one we'll have a label upload multiple files and we might still face one issue in this input where where we are receiving our images in our multi uploader we need to pass another property called multiple attribute now if I save it go ahead Upload the images one by one I can select one and as I do this we have this thing so we are getting this duplication key error detected and that's basically because we are uploaded images in uploaded IMG and multiple keys detected let me quickly check that one more thing instead of this ML3 I want to make it MR3 MR2 so let me quickly reload and also gonna give it a class margin from top that we let's well have three so let's see where we are having the issue which part of the code we are having the issue I'll click one by one and I think we are getting multiple keys detected so IMG upload let me go to console and networks tab we have two images okay so they are giving the same name so what else I can do is simply gonna extract another variable called I or instead of that I'm gonna put class they dot now in order to tackle this so that we get separate keys for separate values and that might also collide I think so and our console tab we still get that error so what I can do is simply gonna paste I and that I will be getting as a looping variable we can get as a third parameter and now if I reload if I click one by one now you can see we have our images here I don't know why it's not uploading two of them one by one so let me quickly check what's wrong what went wrong we are extracting our files so I'm simply in solo files we have destructured that Oops. We have a file list. Yeah, now you can see it is working just fine. So there was some issue with the. Uh, now it's working fine just now. So we have both the images here, and that is rendering from our server. And for the UI, it's looking pretty straightforward. So now it's it's time to go ahead and make this dynamic these endpoints. Now the way we can do that is by passing a variable called API or whatever you name it just make sure that you receive it in a proper format there uh, register inside the props and that will be of a type string required will be set it to true so to whatever the endpoint you want to pass it I want to copy this out from here and I'll simply pass that this dot API so that I can access this property over here which we have passed and in our API I'm gonna pass that endpoint okay so I don't know never mind 
and a multiple uploader also I'm gonna copy this property from here gonna paste it over there um, and this images directory we'll use this API that we have passed from there gonna paste that oops not here copy this multi upload and now if I save it that API those warning errors are gone so now if I upload two images of them I don't know why it's showing me two In the multiple uploads we have a files we are looping through them one by one We are receiving our files now. Let's see. Let me hard reload that. Yeah, now we can see that our images are rendered properly. So that's it for this video, and we are ready to use our this upload single as well as upload multiple. But one thing which I forgot, if I click on these labels, we haven't attached these labels with our input groups. So the way we can do that, whatever we are receiving inside the prop as a label, we will pass a third property from here that will be our ID. So that will be single, you can name it single, file, upload, I'm gonna copy this part over here in the multi, uh, in multiple. This will be our multi upload, and now we receive that ID as a prop of this component. So we'll simply say ID. Paste it, and then that ID will be linked to this in our HTML4 tag. And that ID will be here and in our input we'll simply say ID and we'll bind our ID to our ID whatever we have passed here the same thing we'll do in our label for we'll bind this for with our ID whatever we have passed in the prop and input also I'm gonna say ID And now so far we haven't received that ID any kind of in our multi uploader so I'm gonna copy this part and multiple uploader I'm gonna go and register that inside the props so now if I go ahead and click in my components so you can simply say ID is not defined on the instance but has been rendered now reload it make sure no our console has no errors and if I click on this part also so this is going for multiple uploads and now we have two files over here in the same way if you want to upload single file we can click that and we can show it here if you want to click more upload you can see our third file is uploaded if I go ahead to my pictures I click another picture and now this is looking quite way off so in multiple uploader in our this part I'm gonna give a flex wrap property so basically this is gonna wrap our images and now you can see that is looking quite nice and we'll also give it a class of mt2 save it and now this looks quite nice so this is a kind of small gallery you can look you can do a lot of other stuff with that so in the next video, we'll start looking how we can create a drop zone in Vue.js. So stay tuned with my channel and thank you guys for this video. And I really liked your response, how you react to my React vUploader as well as the Upload server and a lot of other playlists. The response is quite impressive and that has pushed me to quit my all the jobs and get started with my programming so that I can uh, 
as a pro to pursue my career as a YouTube programmer, though I was doing good in a corporate world, but I was that that way I often felt bored. So I started looking what I can do, and that's what that's what I best I can do. Go through documentation, do couple of stuff, coding, and lot redox and create something awesome from scratch and i love teaching so that's why i got started into this thank you guys so hope you hope i see you guys in the next video